Hey, welcome. Chuck here, KK6USY for Ham Radio Miniatures. So, I just got back from a trip um, with my ham radio gear on an airplane, and I'd like to talk about that because it's fresh in my mind and I haven't unpacked yet. So, let's get with the video. All right, so I just got back from uh, Hawaii. I spent oh, 10 days, something like that there. And I want to take my ham radio gear. I didn't have a whole lot of time for ham radio, but I did want to get one one or two days on the beach and try a vertical on the, right on the water there and see if it actually does help with the uh, salt water. So I just got back and I, uh, I wanted to share things I've seen. Now, I've, I've flown with my ham radio gear probably at least 10 times, maybe 12. So that's there and back. And most of the time, I've, I haven't had a whole lot of problems. Now, the reason I'm making this video is I went on to, on to YouTube to see if there's any videos about it. And I found a couple. Josh um, from uh, Ham Radio Crash Course did one. But it was a, uh, it was a stream. I'm not a big person looking for information on streams, but that's okay. He did a good job. Uh, a lot of good info there. Uh, there was another guy that did a, uh, a podcast on it, and I didn't want to sit through a whole podcast. I want to do something 10, 15 minutes, and then there's one other guy that did it, but it was like five or six years ago, so things have changed a lot since then. Now, traveling by airplane, we all have to agree that it's changed a lot since 9-11. I found out the first time I went to pick up my daughter from college that I couldn't meet her at the plane, uh, not even thinking about it. So, and then COVID has changed a few things also. I've, like I said, I've gone 10 or 12 times. Never been really checked. I always, almost always have left San Francisco. And basically, I put my, my thing through the, uh, the scanner there. I pick it up on this side and I get on the plane. Now, at one time I was coming back from Chicago and my stuff didn't come out, my stuff didn't come out, my stuff didn't come out. And finally I see a guy take it out, he opens it up, starts pulling stuff out of my bag. And then he calls me over and says, hey Mr. Thompson, uh, what you got going here? And I said, it's ham radio. He goes, oh, great. He goes, do you want me to put it back in the bag? And I'm like, no, I'll do it myself. I, I like to do my own stuff as far as my ham radio stuff. You know, some of it could be delicate, and I don't, I don't want somebody else packing it for me. Really, that was the only time of those 10 or 12 times I've been on a plane that I've actually been pulled out of line. Now, Josh on the other hand says he gets pulled out pretty much every time. I don't know why, but okay. Uh, so, but this last trip to Hawaii... It was the first time in San Francisco that I saw more checking than in the, in the previous trips. And what they did on um, is they made me take every electronic device out of my backpack. Now, I bought a backpack specific for camera stuff. Uh, it's, a, it's kind of a drone one, but it's good for camera because when I went on our camp out trip to Yosemite, I had stuff in all these different bags. and I. <laughs> I really didn't want to uh, do that again. So basically, they made me pull every electronic device out of my backpack. This is include cameras. And so I, I had three cameras. I had a, a DJI Action. I had my video camera, camcorder, and my regular uh, camera that I'm using right now, my uh, Sony. Along with that, I had at least three batteries for each camera. So I was a little leery of all the batteries, you know lithium batteries thing you know with the, you know with the thing with the samsung's blowing up at one time that's that's big on their thing so i go through the line he says put everything out so it's flat so it's so they're, so they're not stacked so i do that the guy gets perturbed at me obviously takes my a57 which is what i took for my radio puts it in its own thing even though everything was flat and kind of slammed it down. I was not real happy, but he didn't do it too hard. And uh, you could tell he was, I'm sure he sees a lot of people that give him problems. So 
I chalk it up to that. Everything went fine. It went through. Boom, I pack everything back up. I'll show you later how I had it packed to go and to come home. To come home, I made it easier to have all my cameras very handy, which they were the first time, but I had coax and wires and all kinds of stuff on top of them. I took all that out for the home trip because we had a little room in a, uh, a suitcase that we had some stuff in that we consumed while we were there. I go through the thing and, and now granted, this whole COVID thing in Hawaii, uh, California's pretty strict. Hawaii's like double strict. So I'm thinking, well, I'm gonna probably <laughs> have to pull everything out. So I get it set up so it's super easy. I can pull all my cameras out, boom, 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 pull my radio out. I get in the line, I said, uh, I have ham radio equipment. The The gal tells me, uh, yeah, pull your radio out and put in the thing. I go, how about camera? She goes, no, I just leave everything else in the bag. So even though TSA is TSA, it does depend on where you're flying from and who is checking you in. So you may have different, uh, experiences than I do, and that's okay. Everybody's a little different. Uh, even TSA is different in different places. Now, the one time that I did get pulled out of line, and I'm gonna try and reenact what I had packed that time, because on that one, I had my A57. I had a tuner, a manual tuner. I had a power supply. I had an amplifier. I had a 500 watt amplifier that I took with me. I had a uh, offsetter fed, dipole now that to me would be one thing they might look at because it's got the four to one in the middle it looks kind of like a pipe bomb maybe in a scanner so on the way out i'm like i, I had actually bought one of those really nice carry-on cases from um you know the ones like harbor freight sells but it was the high, more high dollar one and i found out that with the wheels and all that stuff in there it didn't have much room in it even though it was a carry-on size so I ended up just taking a regular carry-on because I could fit more stuff and I had a lot of stuff. On the way home, that was when I got checked. Not going to Chicago, it was coming home from Chicago. So let me get my stuff out, what I took this time, and I'll try and reenact. You guys will be really, I mean, you'll see why I got pulled aside at least once on the uh, Chicago trip. So let me get all that stuff together and I'll show it to you guys. All right, guys, let me just let me first show you what I didn't put in my backpack and I did it on a, uh, a checked bag and that would be this right here. What I had was this is a stake I use. OK, this is uh, for my vertical that I put in the sand. I actually had the water wash up right into the, the actual uh, stake, just a, a stake that I made. This is a EMT with a a solid tip. And it's just a mirror mount. So that went in a check bag. Okay, this is my uh, 17 foot MFJ extendable stainless steel whip. So it comes out, all right. And this will do, it'll do 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10, and maybe six, I don't know. I've never tried six. Six is usually better horizontal anyhow, but it works vertically anyhow. And, this, and then this is the, the mast I used. I believe this one is a soda beams, maybe. And hey, check out all my buddies here. Got their stickers. Thank you for the stickers, guys. Got a little bit of everybody. Smoke Signals RF, Ham Radio 2.0, TO from Temporary Offline, a Ham Radio Dude. And I don't know why I don't have a Smoking Ape sticker on here. I just forgot to put it on, I guess. Sorry, Ape. Okay, all of those went in my. Um, my check bag, mainly because they were too long for this. I mean, I, this will fit in here, but it sticks up pretty way, pretty far, and I didn't want to take that. Same with the 17-footer. Uh, All right, let me let me pull this in. Now, this is a bag I bought uh, for this trip and for future trips that I carry my camera gear. But in this in this case, it actually did double purpose because it did my. Um, my camera gear and my radio gear. And right now it's packed pretty much, pretty close to what I took when I left San Francisco. And I told you guys that I changed that, okay? Pretty nice bag. I'll, I'm gonna do a review on this later. Uh, for the money, I don't think you can do much better. 
And if you have drones, it's made for drones. Okay, so this is the way I went. Now I told you guys that I had to have my radio out, had to have all my cameras out. So let me get to that point. And this is why I changed this for the, the second trip looked more like, more like that. Um, that's because I had to, had to have my, on the trip going, I had to have my camera and everything out. So here's my radio. It had to be in its own box. The 857, great radio. I love this thing. Uh, okay, I had, this is a, a DJI Axon. And that was, it was actually in, in another section, in this camera section, but for now, this is the way I brought it home. Okay, so, and I, the camera I'm using right now went in this spot here. The DJI actually was, was down in here like that. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me move this camera up just a, so, like I said, my Sony was here. I had this camcorder. Um, I brought this because this thing has a 60 times zoom. I will show you this battery. I took this battery out. Now, while I was there, I got to meet Todd from um, Hawaii, and uh, he gave me a Bofang radio. He wants me to review it. So I took the battery out because your batteries have to go on the carry-ons, most batteries. So that was in there. I packed the radio. I didn't have enough room in here to put the radio. Now, I think HTs, if you go, everybody knows what an HT is, uh, whether, that, whether or not they know exactly what type of HT. So I think you're pretty safe taking those on most of the time. Josh did say he got it pulled pulled out of line for that even. So I, I don't understand it sometimes. So that's what I had there. This is a bag of uh, fittings. Um, I think this has a bunch of camera stuff in it. Um, again, more batteries. These, I, have, I had a ton of batteries. I probably had 15 spare batteries for cameras. In my, in, including my microphones. Now, I chose not to take a power supply, so I took my BioNO charger, because it was small. I took my nine amp hour battery, because that powers my radio for at least two, three hours. And I have to say, I was out an hour and a half, it took me an hour and 20 minutes to recharge the battery. That was pretty fast. So I got my power cord for my radio. I just bought this, I'm testing it. I'll do a review on it later, the Chameleon. This is the 500 watt version because I do have an amplifier that I can take portable that does 500 watts. Okay, and then the counterpoise. So that was pretty much everything in this main compartment. Now, I am gonna do a video probably on what I learned on doing videos on the beach. It's different, guys. I'm gonna see how long, how long this is so far and I will try and uh, reenact or, or show you some of the stuff that I took to uh, Chicago when I did get pulled out. All right, guys. Hey, I forgot. I had one more antenna. Uh, this was uh, my infant halfway that I took with me because I knew I could trust it. Car, It's a car antenna. More about that later. Like I told you, I have my 857. Okay. So that was the same as this trip. I did take a power supply, and I bought this. This is from PowerWorks. I bought it because of its size. I think I bought it just before I went. It has the Anderson power poles. It's a switching power supply. I've never had a problem with noise of any of my switching power supplies. Your uh, your mileage may vary. That's okay. It has the connectors in the back here also. At that time, I was not really doing any portable work, so I didn't have. Oh man, the crows are crazy. Uh, I didn't have any. Uh, batteries at the time for that kind of work other than big lead acids so I don't know about you guys I don't understand why TSA would pull something that looks like a uh, a pipe bomb out out and wonder what it is with a bunch of wire but uh, they did this is a Chicago trip now and I probably had more stuff in that bag than than I'm showing but uh, I had two or three of these these are pretty cheap ones off of eBay they go uh, there's 7.2 meters. The last three sex, two or three sections is not very good. I probably had at least this much coax and maybe more. I think this is a 50 footer. I may have had a hundred feet. 
In fact, I think I did because I had a long run and 50 was not gonna take care of it. Now, I didn't take this from San Francisco, but I did order it and have it sent to my brother-in-law's house. You guys can even see that. There we go. Uh, and I use this when I go camping all the time. I like a manual tuner personally. You may not, but that's okay also. Uh, it's a pretty good tuner for the money. Nowhere near as smooth as the one I have in my house as far as this goes. But, hey, it works really, really good. And I've never had a problem with it. People talk bad about MFJ. Eh, I've never had a problem with any of their products so far. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Now, to go a little bit above and beyond here, I took this. This is a Tokyo High Power HL450B. It is 450 to 500 watts. I usually run at about 300, 350. And that being said, it only takes 20 or 30 watts in to get that. Really, really awesome little amp. Too bad this company went out of business. I will do a review on this if you guys want it. Put it in the comments if you want to see a review on this. It has a lot of fail safes. Sometimes the fail safes are a little annoying because they are very safe. I put all this in a uh, just a regular hard-sided carry-on bag, and it was packed. And uh, I'll tell you what, I sorry about the, the crows, guys. You know, I can't blame the guy for pulling me out of line. I, I understand it. And I'm not one of those people that gets really mad about everything that happens. I, 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 you guys can probably tell I'm pretty easygoing. Uh, even even the ham radio did doesn't make me mad half the time. Okay, well, once in a while. Not really. I'm just kidding. I love that guy. He's going to come out and see me, actually, uh, next week. So if you guys haven't checked out ham radio, dude, you want to talk about the most honest guy in ham radio, that's the guy. He, uh, I mean, sometimes maybe too honest for some companies. So check his channel out. That's Ham Radio Dude. Okay, everyone. I, I, I really hope this helps somebody or everybody, hopefully. Uh, and like I said, you're, you may find something different when you go, and that's okay. Things are different everywhere. So uh, this is what I found out. Also, if you think I missed anything, leave it in the comments down below. And if you have anything to add, leave that in the comments down below also. And if you didn't like the video, tell me why you didn't like the video. Don't just leave me a thumbs down. So hopefully you did get something out of this. If you did, hit that like button. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button, hit that all, then you'll get all my future videos. This is Chuck, KK6USY for Ham Radio Ventures. Be safe, everyone. 73s, and I hope to catch you on the airwaves.